So let's look at identifying elements with X paths and all. Okay, I'll just make or look at this particular uh, file where I had opened the browser dynamically. Fine. So I could just change the name of the browser. Say I change the name of the browser Chrome over here, then the Chrome browser will launch. If you go to some website, but you know, uh, we saw how to identify with ID, how to identify elements with name. Okay. But every time, every element won't have an ID or a name. Fine. You won't find ID or a name with every element on the web page. Okay. If I just open the same relative.com and if I uh, go to the same sign in link which you were looking at, fine. We used a username and password text fields in our examples earlier uh, because username and password had ID or a name, but everything won't have an ID. Okay. Uh, for example, yeah, like yesterday, I took the example of this link, creative.com. If you inspect this link, then in the page source, this is the link. Okay, it's got no ID, no name. If I have to identify it, how do I identify it? In this case, uh, we use XPaths. Okay, now what are XPaths? Like uh, you you have an address. Okay, that address uniquely identifies you. Okay, similarly, XPaths are there which are like the address of the element on the web page. We also have something known as CSS selectors. All right, which uh, we will look at later on. Okay. Now, there are two types of XPaths. One is known as the partial XPath and other one is known as the complete XPath. There is a difference between complete XPath and partial XPath. Okay, complete XPath is also known as absolute XPath. Fine. For example, this is a link, anchor tag. Okay. Right. In the page source over here, I will just hit Control F. When I hit Control F, I will see a text box over here. Fine. Okay. So this is in the text box. I'll write the name of the first tag, which is in the root, which is the HTML tag. So I'll write HTML. So it will you see that it highlights the HTML tag. Now inside the HTML tag, there is head tag, there is body tag. Okay, so as I told you yesterday as well, you will have to traverse down the tags till you reach the anchor tag. So inside the HTML tag, there is a body tag. So you will write slash body. So see that? See that this body tag gets highlighted. Inside the body tag, you have to go inside the division tag, which is over here. Okay, inside the body tag, there are multiple parallel tags, out of which you have to go to the division tag. Okay, so you will write slash div. You see that this division gets highlighted. Inside this division, there are three parallel tags. Okay, these three parallel tags over here are inside this particular division tag. Fine. So these three parallel tags are there. You want to go inside the first one because you have to reach the anchor tag. So you will write over here slash div bracket. So when you write like this, okay, it just yeah, it highlights this division. Okay, out of the three divisions, this division is highlighted. Inside this division, again, there are three parallel tags. You want to go in the first one. Okay, so you will write over here slash 
div one again. So this is highlighted. See that? Under this, there is again like there are two divisions. You want to go again the in the first division, right? And the anchor tag is inside the first division. So you will write slash div one again, and then the slash anchor tag. So you see that this link gets highlighted. Okay, and it says one out of one element found. Okay. So it's uniquely identifying the link. So this becomes the absolute XPath for this particular element. But as I told you, like you don't have to calculate it like this. You can calculate it by simply right-clicking on the element, go to the copy option, and you say copy full XPath. Okay, you select copy full X path. So when you do that, Chrome will give you the full X path of the element. Okay, you can use it in the program. All right, for example, uh, in the dynamic browsers, I'll say that fine, I'll use Chrome and I will navigate to this particular URL. And uh, I will write driver dot find element by the X path. Okay, and you will give this particular X path. Dot click. So you click on the element. Okay, you interact with the web page. So what will happen is that if you run this program, this is going to open up Chrome. You see that it clicks on that link. Okay, right. And yeah, Swati, I'm coming over to that point. So the question being asked is that when you go to copy, there is copy XPath and copy full XPath. Copy XPath is going to give you partial XPath. Copy full XPath is going to give you the absolute XPath. Okay, just hold on. Right. So over here, we refrain from using the complete XPath. You can get complete XPath for any element. Okay, you can simply first go find the element. Say I will find this image. And then you can right click, copy the full XPath and use it. Fine, but we refrain from using the full XPath because, you know, obviously it's the page structure by which it goes. Okay. And in between anything that's added at the root level or anything that's removed, then not even one XPath, but all the XPaths of my application will go for a toss. You will have to open up the scripts and change everywhere. And this is not what we want. We want to write scripts in which you know, even if the application changes, you have to do the minimum changes to the script. Or the change management should be easy. Okay. So what we do, we, we don't prefer to use this. We prefer to uh, use partial XPaths. Okay, we don't prefer to use the complete XPaths. We prefer to use the partial XPaths. Now, how do we use the partial XPaths? Okay, although this XPath, complete XPath is very accurate. Okay, and it will work in every browser because the page source remains same in every browser. Even if I change the browser to Mozilla over here instead of Chrome and I run my script. So you will see that you will see that the Mozilla browser will open and
Do you see that? All right. So it goes to the relative.com and you know, it clicked on the link. So everything is okay. So, you know, the partial X path is something which does the same thing like a complete X path identifies the element, but it is shorter. Partial X path starts with double slash star. Double slash star means all elements on the web page. Okay, right. And if you write, say, double slash star over here, you will see that there are one out of 687 elements. It is saying one of 687 elements. That means there are around 687 elements on the web page. Okay, right. And if I write double slash, say, A, it will represent all the anchor tags, that means all the links on the web page. Okay, right. So if I write double slash A, so this means all links on the web page. If I say, if I go to this username field, this is my username field. I right click on it and I say that copy X path. Yeah, the site might be opening differently at your end. Okay. We don't get all the elements on the web page by writing this, we get specific elements. Okay. For example, you right click on this input element and copy the X path, not full X path, copy X path. This is the partial X path. And you will see an X path like this. That is double slash star means out of all the elements on the web page, get me the element whose ID is login one. Okay. In Selenium, we don't use double quotes. We end up using single quotes. Okay. You copy this and you write driver dot find element by the X path dot send keys I'll type hello. Okay. So when you run this You can make the script in any browser, run it in any browser. The page source remains the same. See, on I am running on Mozilla, it's running. Right. Okay. Moreover, the tag name for this element is input. Okay, we have the tag name for text field as input. So you can write like this that you can also make the export like this double slash instead of star you can write input. That means out of all the input tags on the page get me the input tag whose id is login one. So this is how partial xpaths are made. Okay right like uh, for, for example if you go to say facebook.com or bc.com, any website, and you investigate any particular link, say I investigate this particular link. England Raw. Okay, I have to get the X path for this. If I copy this X path, then I get an X path something like this. Okay, right. 
सो वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट दिस इज द एंकर टैग ओके एंड दिस इज द एक्सपाथ विच आई हैव कॉट फाइन एंड यू नो इट दिस एंकर टैग हैज गॉट नो आई डी सो इट जैंग इट जम्प्स वन टैग अब विच इज दिस एस थ्री टैग दिस एस थ्री टैग हैज ऑल्सो नॉट गॉट एनी आई डी सो इट जम्प्स वन टैग अब विच इज दिस डिविजन सेकेंड डिविजन tag under this div so it keeps on jumping above till the time it finds this element this division with id page so it finds an element which has an id and it starts building the x path from this id till the time it reaches this anchor tag okay so partial x paths in case of chrome they are determined or they are made based on the nearest element having an id in our case this was the nearest element which had the id page okay right okay and we traversed down this element till this anchor tag hello yes uh, so can you elaborate more than anchor tag because you are saying in the anchor tag but what is anchor tag this is a means the anchor tag it represents it. what is the purpose of that it's a tag name it represents the link okay Okay, see this a. This is a division tag. This is a division tag. This is h two tag. Okay, and a is the anchor tag. We it's known as the anchor tag. It is a very famous tag. It represents a link. All the links are inside the anchor tag. Okay, right. Yeah, double slash star will select everything. Double slash star means all the elements on the page, but we don't use this one, okay? Because nobody is going to select all the elements on that page. We want selected elements, okay? Double slash a, or when I write a, it represents link on the web page. It's known as the anchor tag. Okay, now. this is the partial x path you just have to right click on the element and copy the partial x path and use it it will start building the x path from the nearest element with an id but what if the nearest element is not having an id okay for example we were looking at this relative mail page this is the red if mail image this is the one if i copy the x path for this it gives me the complete x path even if i am copying the partial x path it is giving me the complete x path because there is no element between the division tag and the very root of this document the html tag there is no element between this tag this and this which has got an id it keeps on finding elements and it never finds a nearest element with an id so it auto automatically builds the complete text okay right so sometimes this happens okay if i look at this link if i copy the x path for this link i get an x path like this in this case there was an element which had an id okay and under that this particular link is lying so that element is somewhere over here this is the element so it found this element okay 
build the X path from this element to this link. Okay, but it did not go to the root tag because in between it found an element. So this is about means X it, path. Means yeah. it searches ne nearest ID path. Yeah, the nearest element with an ID. Oh. Okay, and in case it doesn't get it, it goes to the very root of the document and builds the complete X path. Okay, right. So this is how X paths are built, and X paths built on one browser are also valid on the other browsers like we saw that we made it on chrome and you know we could actually use it on firefox as well okay you see that right in firefox also you can calculate x paths you can right click and inspect that image see i'm right clicking and inspecting the username field and you can copy the x path now the problem is in firefox you don't get the option to copy partial or full x path a simple x path option okay you can copy the x path it's discretion of firefox whether it will give you complete x path or partial x path for example this link over here okay if i copy the x path for this link on Firefox, I actually end up getting complete export. But in Chrome, it gave me the partial export. So Firefox is a little unpredictable. Okay. So it's better that you use Chrome and identify the elements in Chrome. And I also prefer that. And if you have identified it on Chrome, you can run it on Mozilla, Firefox, or Edge, or any particular browser. Okay right now the thing is uh, we have seen identification of elements we have seen by three criteria by the id by the name and by the x there are other things as well for example link text and partial link text you can use there is something known as class name, there is something known as CSS selector. Okay, so I will come over to uh, these now. Let's look at the class name. Okay, before looking at the class name, we need to understand what is a class. All right, and you also need to understand about the concept of basically CSS. Look, CSS is something which gives look and feel to the web page. Okay, right. For example, if you look at the page source, in the head tag, uh, you will always find that you know some imports are made on all the web pages okay you will always find some imports like this is one import which is uh, importing this CSS file actually this is the this is the import but you know you don't need to go into this basically you need to understand CSS is a language which gives look and feel to the element okay for example you know, uh, this text field over here, this is the text field. In the right column over here, you will see something known as styles. Okay. Yeah, there is a question being asked. There is a question we ask is this where you would recommend using Selenium IDE to record sample scenarios? The actions such as clicking on buttons or send keys or input fields will be recorded. No. Look, I don't use Selenium IDE. I never use Selenium IDE. Look, the thing is, IDE is a tool. I'll tell everybody that you no, know, you simply record in it, it 
records everything it's a separate tool okay it records all your actions and it also gives you some xpaths and all while recording but the problem is <clears throat> you should know how to make them when you go to an interview interviewer will simply tell you that fine make the xpath for this element and show me so ide if you have the habit of ide then you know it's tough to actually learn it practically secondly ide is not a tool which can be used for bigger scenarios sometimes you have got 2000 test cases and all you cannot automate 2000 test cases with ide that is not possible okay so i don't prefer using ide to calculate xpaths because ide will give you just one type of xpath for one element but you can make multiple types of locators for one element right now i have not come over to that point i'll be coming over to that tomorrow okay like with chrome i have found that this username field has this particular xpath okay right but there can be many other xpaths for this username field as well and you should know how to build those those are known as custom xpaths so ide will not actually give you those things when you proceed with the course you will you will come to know gradually you will come to know what i am trying to tell you okay right so ide if you learn selenium through selenium ide then ide just gives you one direction to go and learn it it never explores the other options which are also there so you only end up going in one direction okay so i don't prefer using id and you will come to know as you proceed okay now as i was telling you about class name okay i'll come back to xpaths in some time i'll be coming back to xpaths because i need to make you understand about class first that what actually class is now if you look at any element say or let's look at the bbc page right if you look at say this headlines it's highlighted so it's highlighted in the page source like this this is the link okay you will see something known as styles mentioned this style is the css style that means it gives the look and feel to the element for example the css style says that the color of this element is this if i remove this checkbox you see that color of the link changes rather color of other links are also changing okay the position of this element is relative so if i uncheck both of them sometimes you know the element it actually distorts if i uncheck this display and you know there are many look and feel components for this element which are defined by this style tag see that margin if i am checking and checking the link is moving a little bit right so there are these are the different classes css classes associated with this okay element style media overlay block inline block link okay media link you don't need to know them know the classes and all but you need to understand one thing that's it only one thing that the classes which are associated with this link let, let me refresh this page or the css classes which are there they are responsible for the look and feel of the link. for example it's written over here that it's a link whose class is media link so this is the media link class okay in css which describes the look and feel for this element okay right so 
it's not mandatory that one link will have a unique class name. There can be multiple elements on the web page which have the same class name. For example, on Rediff, if I go to the shopping section, okay. In the shopping section, you see there are different elements listed. Okay, there are different elements which are listed in the shopping section and every element has a buy now button. If I investigate the first element, then it is highlighted. If I copy the X path of this element, I will get a unique X path which will identify the first button. Okay, I can copy this X path, paste it over here. You see, the button is highlighted. Similarly, I can get the X path for each buy now buttons by right clicking and copying the X path. But if you look at the, each of the button carefully, then each of the button is a span with the class product by now. This is the class product by now. It is the CSS class which represents the look and feel. It says that the background color should be green. If I change this to red, it will change for all the buttons to red. Okay. Right. It says that the width of the button is 80 pixel. I can change it from here to 180 pixels. The button will get whiter. So the developers actually use this to identify the or to you know uh, make the elements similar elements and similar elements on the page have the same class name. This is for sure. All the buttons will have the same class, same CSS class. All right, and in Selenium. When you have the command driver dot find element by the class name, you have to be very careful because sometimes people just see that fine. Okay, this is the class for the first buy now button, and let's use this class to identify the element. Let's let's write a code like this. That is a driver dot find element by the class name of product by now okay and you can identify the element with this and maybe click on it but the problem is this command will go and identify the first buy now button on the button or on the class if there are multiple elements on the class with the same id or same class name okay then Selenium goes and identifies the first element. Okay, because find element command, it identifies the first element on the page with the given criteria. If you want to identify the second one or the third one, I'll come over to that later on. <clears throat> okay, so if I just go to this website, flipkart.com say the username and password text field it appears this is not a pop-up this is known as a light box it's the part of the same page actually okay if I look at the username field then this is the username field and it's got this class underscore two Z R P K A underscore one B. There is a space in between. If there is a space in the class name, that means there are two classes associated with this element. There are two CSS classes which are giving look and feel to this element. One is this one, and other one might be a little bit here and there. Okay. Uh, 
okay leave it just i am just telling you that one of the classes is this other classes is underscore 1d bpdz which is which the developer has made might be somewhere else okay, it's not showing here okay but these two classes are responsible to give the look and feel of to the element if there is a space in the class name that means there are two particular classes for this element okay if i make the code like this say hold on i'll make a new class no means flip part look what i'm trying to explain you right now is nothing but what is basically a css class and it will be helpful later on and it will be very helpful these kind of things you cannot understand from ide okay right and over here you go to flipkart.com right and after this the pop up appears i write driver dot find element by the class name and i write the class name as this particular two classes which are associated with it and dot send keys say hello and when i run this program you see that it comes over here it's not writing hello and it says that invalid selector exception compound class names are not valid this is the problem you cannot have two class names written to identify one element with class name okay you cannot write like this you can give just one class name there should not be any space but the problem which we will encounter with this is that if i just give this class name to identify this element then this particular class can be associated with some other element as well because class names are not unique they can be associated with multiple components so this particular criteria that is driver dot find element by the class name we don't use it much in selenium okay because it is tricky first of all it never lets you give two classes inside it secondly the class itself is not unique to an element okay but yes we use class names in something known as custom xpaths xpaths which we make on our own okay i'll come over to this custom xpath as well over here we use uh, class names or uh, ids general name or other attributes to identify the elements okay and you see you have the option of identifying the element with css select out here also we use class names a lot when we are identifying the elements with css select okay so my main motive was to make you understand that what is a class a class is something which gives look and feel to the element okay if i remove this class name attribute from here you see the page gets distorted the text field gets distorted okay right anyways now moving ahead okay you need before i you know i move ahead and build the programs you need to also understand something about implicit weight 
<clears throat> right for example uh, let me go back to the older code after launching the browser i am going to the website it's printing the title of the web page i am finding this username field and typing it if i give an x path which is actually not existing there is no element with this id then what's going to happen if i run this code you see that it did not write in this but it threw an exception known as no such element exception that is there is no element with this particular expat and it threw that immediately within a fraction of a second once the page is loaded within a fraction of a second you will get that exception what if you want selenium to wait sometimes you want selenium to wait you want that it should wait until element is there okay at times what happens is that the page loads the element takes maybe 5 seconds to load after the page loads okay so what we do is that sometimes people say that fine go and use thread dot sleep thread dot sleep say 5 seconds this is like pausing the program thread dot sleep is like pausing the program for 5 seconds even if the element loads in the second second or the third second thread dot sleep will mandatorily we pause the program <clears throat> and you know using thread dot sleep once or twice is fine in the script it doesn't make a difference but if you are using it regularly it actually slows down the script so you should actually refrain yourself from using this however you can use something known as implicit wait okay you can give the command driver dot manage dot timeout dot implicitly wait say 20 comma time unit dot seconds so implicit wait will cause the a waiting strategy or will bring a waiting strategy in the program first of all this is a global timeout this is a global timeout what do you mean by global timeout this is applicable to all driver dot find element commands in your program okay it we give implicit wait immediately after opening the browser even before going to the website we prefer to give implicit wait if you have studied uft then in uft there is something known as timeout over there as well okay page load timeout so it's similar to that it is applicable to all the driver dot find element commands and it is dynamic if the element is found in say the 10th second we have given 20 seconds if the element is found in the 10th second it will use the element and move forward for 20 seconds it will keep on polling the web page it will keep on polling the web page for 20 seconds but if the element appears in 10th second it will use it and move ahead it is not like pausing the program right so in our case right now if i run the program this will not throw the error for 20 seconds okay sorry this will throw the error after 20 seconds sorry this will throw the error after 20 seconds you see the browser has 
launched this is the browser and it is trying to find the element on the web page and when it fails in the end after 20 seconds it will throw the exception not immediately however if it would have found this particular element within the third second or the fifth second it would have used it and moved forward Okay, if I write like this, I give the right x path. Okay, I don't give the wrong x path. And if I just run the program again, say on Chrome, it will create no delay. Okay, so implicit weight, you see that immediately types hello and all. Right. So implicit weight is a global timeout, it is dynamic and it checks for the presence of element on the web page. Okay, right. Now, there are different attributes associated with an element. I don't want to go into the depth. Okay, there is something known as, say, presence. There is something known as visibility. Okay. Sorry. And there is something known as the element should be enabled. These are the three factors which actually determine the interactability of the element with Selenium. If you have to interact with any element with Selenium that isn't on the page, it should that means it should be visible to the human eye. Sometimes, you know, some elements are hidden. Okay, for example, on BBC, if I click on this more link, then some more links they appear. In by default, those links are hidden, those are not visible. When you write Selenium script, you have to make these visible first by clicking on more, and then you have to interact with them. If you don't click on more, try to say give the XPath for the TV link and interact with it, Selenium will fail. If Selenium has to interact with an element, the element has to be present. It has to be visible. Visible means visible to the human eye. And it has to be enabled. These are the three important conditions and people actually, you know, miss these at times. Okay. Out of these three conditions, the first condition is satisfied by implicit weight. Implicit weight, it just checks the presence of the element on the web page. It doesn't tell you that fine, it is present but it is invisible or it is present but it is disabled. It won't go into that depth. But it will just tell you that fine, element is there on the page. Maybe it is invisible, maybe it is visible, you don't know. That checks you have to do later on. Okay, right. So I will come over to visibility and the enabling of the element as well as we proceed. Okay, but right now just understand this thing about implicit weight. All right, sometimes you know there is a top menu when you move the mouse over the top menu, it gets expanded. So at times, you know, you have to interact with the elements of the top menu and expand them. So you have to simulate doing that with the help of Selenium again, that is moving the mouse and all. I, I'll tell you in the coming things, right. So this was a very, very basic session about XPaths and about implicit weight and especially about a very important thing known as the class name, which will help us in the coming days to understand custom XPaths as well as CSS selectors. Okay, now if anybody has any questions, you can please feel free to ask me anything.
anything from anyone.